Do you feel like the offense has finally figured it out? I think they're starting to. They took a first step in that game. I mean, we talked about last week how good of a defense Carolina is. I thought they would have been I – th- I predicted them to go 24 points. So I was off by six. You know, they scored 30. But at that point, you know, they kind of – Carolina looked defeated. It, it was over for those fools. Um, but I think – they really have to tap in and see and acknowledge what they did right. So what did they do right? They spread the ball around. That's what I thought. That was my notice point. Look, it wasn't just Debo or die. It was let's do everyone. I love the airplanes around here. Uh, it, it was Debo. It was it just Debo die. You got George Kittle involved early, which we talked about last week. Cause like, what do you got to do George Kittle? Can we design more? And boom, you get him off the bat. I a little bit. Jerron Jennings run the football. So to me, I saw you saw a great complimentary football between Jimmy and Kyle. Kyle was calling plays eloquently. Jimmy probably played the best game I've seen out of him since 2019, to be honest. I, I don't think he played a better game last year than the one this last game. So on the road against good defense, it's asking a lot for you to keep clicking on both sides with Kyle calling plays like that and Jimmy. But that's really what's going to be done. So they took the first step. It's just about finding that consistency. Yeah, they're taking lots of steps in the right direction. They, they're rotating their running backs. They've got a, a change of pace back. They're getting the ball to use check. Um, I think Kyle's been a little bit vindicated in how he's been using Kittle because Kittle fumbled. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe Kittle isn't necessarily a focal point of the passing game anymore. Um, a couple of things they could continue to improve on. Uh, oh, but before I get there, I want to say they're actually using Jimmy well. And the whole league knows where the Niners want want to call passes for Jimmy. So all of a sudden on third down, you're seeing stuff deep and outside the numbers to tight ends and running backs. Yep. So, I mean, that's the right move. It's open. I just wonder how long Jimmy can execute that. Um, so what they continue to do is they need to find a short yardage back. It's not Tevin Coleman. It's not Jeff Wilson Jr. It could be Ty Davis Price. I think it's Jordan right. Mason. But you got to find that guy. Um, and then you got to get, like, Debo isn't having a great year as a wide receiver. He's still great after the catch. But getting him the ball – Nine targets, two catches last week. And then Ayuk, like three catches a game is just not enough. They got to get, I know they're a run first team, but Ayuk is way too good to be, uh, you know, getting fewer than five catches a game. He should be getting at least five catches a game. But I feel like they'll figure, uh, he probably is going to go for 10 catches and 150 yards this week. So I'm not really worried about Kyle. I think he's figuring out his best players. Yeah, and I think I look watching back the, the game last night, or just the first half, but Ayuk was open a nice several times again. But, you know, we already know Jimmy Lee's stuff on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just wondering where now – so we saw him get Kittle involved early on. If we can get something like that with Ayuk, I mean, not ne- I know it's a little easy. You go for play action in the first play. It's an easy little jump off to the side there. Um, but there's plenty of other ways you got to try to figure out how to use Ayuk. Why not hitting him on those little quick, out, uh, quick slants that you're trying to hit Debo in that first red zone trip? That was almost picked. Um, that was probably an RPO, though. I, I'm not sure. But it's it's more about finding this, the again, just the rhythm. And I think if Jimmy can develop a trust, giving those, you know, we, you, you talk about the Jimmy gimmies. Mm. If you just dart it in him and maybe Jimmy feels that clicking, just a couple of easy throws, it can be just even a screen, just something that's like, okay, I'm hitting IU. I feel confident I can hit him five, ten more yards now deeper. Uh, it's just really if Kyle's going to dial him up and just getting in into his helmet saying, I used to be open here, Jimmy. you got to have to throw this. See, that's the thing. I, I think it's not necessarily Kyle as much as it's Jimmy, right? Like, there are too many clips of Brandon Ayuk being the number one uh, option in the progression, him being open and Jimmy going to the next guy. Like, against the Rams. Rams when, when he was at the whip right? route. Yeah, the whip route. He was wide open. Jimmy's like, no, let me throw the double cover George Kittle over there. And so there's only so much Kyle can do. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why Jimmy's so hesitant to throw to Ayuk because when they traded for Emmanuel Sanders, Jimmy was throwing him a ton of balls right away. And then when they brought in Ayuk, he was here to replace Sanders' exact role and runs a lot of the same routes, and all of a sudden Jimmy's like, no. It's crazy because, I mean, he's better than Emmanuel Sanders, and he's open. I just don't understand that. Yeah, and I, I'm a, I'm a short. I'm gonna push back a little bit on the Kyle can't do anything. Yeah, he, he can't on the field, but you can you, you can get literally in his ear like Jimmy. It's gonna be open. Throw it. Yeah, to him. he does it with yeah. other receivers. He tells them to he do does. it with. De- I mean, look, I think he's doing it with Debo Samuel. That's why he's forcing in some some of those throws. I mean, look, you see the targets he's throwing to Debo. I feel like when right, Jimmy throws to Debo, that's when he gets his most pickable throws versus anyone else. I mean, it's right. all over the place with Jimmy when he does have those. But you know, you know, Jimmy loves throwing to Debo. Who wouldn't? But last week, like to your point, the, the the script was all about Kittle, which is cool. Now I feel like this right script off, yeah. could should be all about Ayuk. You know, and that's, that's good because you want to get yeah. those guys early on because you get the defense thinking, okay, they're actually going to get Kittle involved this game, right? 
Because if you don't do it early on, look, the, how many times do your coaches and players say, set the tone, set the tone? It's great. You do that right. with your running game, but they know that's coming. You're not utilizing Kittle. You're not utilizing Ayuk as much as you should. They don't think mm-hmm. that's coming. They're, it's like Debo, Debo. And I think that was the consensus from that Carolina defense. Like, we know you're going to run the football, and it's going to be Debo. Try something else. And to your point, that's why those pushing the ball a few times, Jimmy pushed the ball downfield, it was pretty solid out of him. And he was even throwing with some anticipation here and there. So I think that's where you got to try, try to figure out if you're Kyle. It's like, I got to figure out what this defense is going to key in on. And it's pretty always, it seems pretty much almost typical. It's going to be the running game in Debo. One thing that kills me about Kyle, he says he doesn't watch the, the Bill Walsh tapes. Maybe this wasn't on the tape, but what Bill, Bill Walsh liked to do was to get each of his playmakers a touch in the first quarter. Maybe not on the first drive, but just it's the same thing in basketball. You want to get your guys shots early mm-hmm. so they're in the flow of the game. And I, I feel like he does a bad job of that with Ayuk. I mean, in this last game, I don't think he got the ball for a while. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I felt like there was a whole wide receiver drought going on long into this game. Um, I know the other team had good wide, uh, cornerbacks, but... He should be in the script. You should have plays and touches schemed up for all your guys so they get involved early. Ayuk seems like he's young, and if you get him involved early, he might take over. But if he doesn't get the ball to the second quarter, he may feel like it's not his, you know, game. Just saying. Yeah, I just think trying it's to the help. Same thing about. <laughs> I think the same thing. Why we blame Kyle for some of the offensive woes? It's like, well, they're not executing right, so it's on the players. It's like, yeah, well. Are they? Is it? That, is it? It's kind of Kyle's fault. He's not playing. He's running the plays that they're not executing. So it's the same thing with Ayuk. They're not. He's not installing into the game script or just game or plays that he's going to take to to game day that involves Ayuk. So it's almost like you're kind of limiting yourself to a degree. And maybe he just takes like plays that weren't even on his sheet and just calls it, which isn't far fetched. But I mean, I, I don't think it's common. It's it's just what are you doing to get these guys involved? Because if you get the more you spread it around, I I don't think that's I don't think. I think there's definitely a correlation as to why Jimmy played well is because you you spread it around all over the offense. You use all points of the field horizontally, you were vertical, you ran it, you use all types of talents. And it, to me, it's not totally a surprise why Jimmy played as well as he did. Yep. Joey Mellons says, great video with your dad yesterday. Great, great to life. hear you using the fan money for good. Keep being a real one, Grant. Thank you, Joey. He's Mellons. using that money to another 49ers tattoo. King Winner says, hey, Grant, after watching Brett practice today, when do you th- uh, think expect him to return? Um, not this week. Um, not against KC either. Don't do that. But, like, if he doesn't, if they don't activate him after the three-week, I think they'll use the entire three-week practice window, window <laughs> and then he'll come back, and then he probably won't even be ready then. I'm thinking after the bye week. That'd be smart. Give him more time. After the bye week. Use as much as you can to get this guy up to speed because he is very, very a sensitive body, and you can't. At this point, now that Mosley's gone, you can't afford to lose him. Also, the Niners are not desperate. They're in first place in their division. Their division sucks. They got another winnable game coming up. Like, you know, they're probably going to lose to Kansas City one way or another, although they could win. But, I mean, they're in a good spot. Like, they they have no must-win games coming up on their schedule. Like, what they need is Jason Verrett healthy down the stretch in the playoffs. If they get that, they can win the Super Bowl. So, no reason to, to rush them back for a game in October. Especially not with against the Falcons. And it's like, you don't need them to beat the Falcons. Falcons have no offensive skill power. They got Drake London, Zero. but you should be fine with Charvarius Ward or whatever you're scheming around. And then even Kansas City, they don't have wide receivers either. I mean, you got Patrick Mahomes who makes them into better wide receivers. Yeah, it's better to play. The, you're, you're better doing the bigger picture thing with Jason Verrett than just, just like, hey, we're desperate. Manny Mills is gone. Go, get it in there, Jason. And then he gets hurt or gets gimpy again. That's the last thing you want. That's right. Callie Trummer says, do you think Jimmy targets certain wide receivers, whether they're open or not? Seems as if there's something else at play here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, like, Kittle yeah. can, be, can be totally blanketed. Tevin Coleman, totally blanketed down the field. But Brandon Ayuk, like, oh, you had five feet of separation? Well, that's just not enough. Sorry. Debo could be on Brandon. the sideline on a break drinking water, and Jimmy will still say, here you go, Debo. That's how much he wants to force feed it to these guys. Yep. But Brandon is like, dude, sorry. Maybe, maybe next week. All right. So the offense – Definitely is trending the right direction because Kyle Shanahan is doing what he always does. It takes him a while, but he figures out his best players and how to use them, and he's getting there right now. <laughs>